The Gospel lesson for the Epiphany of our Lord is from Matthew chapter 2. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose, and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, For this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. This is the word of the Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The world would be a much nicer place if people responded to God's guidance and direction the way the Magi did. By a guiding star and by the word of the prophet Micah, the Magi let God lead them. He let God, they let God lead them to Bethlehem and the newborn king. And when their visit was completed, God warned them in a dream not to go back to Herod, so they returned to their country by another route. Again, they were letting God lead them and guide them. Also, the world would be a much nicer place if people received and appreciated God's gifts the way the Magi did. They were delighted by God's gift of a Savior. They were filled with joy as the opportunity to greet the newborn king drew closer and closer. When at long last they met their Savior, they bowed down and worshipped him. And they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. They thought that Jesus was important, a gift from above. And they showed their thankfulness by giving him their best. Thanks be to God for the Magi and the faith created in their hearts by the Holy Spirit and their good deeds and generosity, the fruit of faith. The world would be a much nicer place if people responded to God's guidance and direction the way the Magi did. The world would be a much nicer place if people received and appreciated God's gifts the way the Magi did. But all too often, the world responds to God's guidance and direction and gifts the way King Herod did, with a thankless and unbelieving heart. Unlike the Magi and the shepherds and the angels, Herod was disturbed by the news of the Messiah's birth. And when he heard the words of Micah's prophecy about the Savior's birth in Bethlehem, he refused to be guided by God's word. When he said to the Magi that he too wanted to go and worship the newborn king, those aren't the words of a thankful and believing heart. He was lying to the Magi. 
a lie that came from a thankless and unbelieving heart. Before long, guided not by God and his spirit, but by sinful anger and hatred, Herod would order the murder of all the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity who were two years old and under. He wasn't thankful for the gift of a savior. He tried to destroy the gift of a savior. The world would be a much nicer place if people responded to God's guidance and direction and gifts the way the Magi did. They were blessed, the Magi were, with thankful and believing hearts. But all too often, the world responds to God's guidance and God's gifts with thankless and unbelieving hearts. And we too are tempted to respond that way. There's a part of us that is tempted to respond to God's guidance and God's gifts with thankless and unbelieving hearts. For example, we're tempted to ignore the guidance that God gives us in his holy law, especially if it's going to require some sort of sacrifice on our part, or if it's going to cause some sort of struggle within us, a wrestling with sin and temptation. We're tempted to think of the gift of baptism as permission to give in to that temptation because God's just going to forgive us anyway. But authentic and real appreciation for the gifts of baptism and Holy Communion and forgiveness, real authentic appreciation for these gifts is the fruit of good works and generous hearts and giving God our best like the Magi did. That's how a thankful and believing heart responds to God's mercy and love. But there's a part of us that is tempted to respond to God's guidance and gifts, his mercy and love with thankless and unbelieving hearts. Thanks be to God for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, he always had a thankful and believing heart, didn't he? And he responded to, hev to his heavenly Father's guidance and direction with faithfulness and trust. And he received and appreciated God's gifts, including the gift of holy baptism. It was important to Jesus, wasn't it, to receive John's baptism and then live a life of fruitfulness and good works. And that's how one shows authentic and real appreciation for the gift of baptism. The world is a much nicer place because of him, because of Jesus and his thankful and believing heart. He is the salt of the earth and the light of the world. And Jesus was willing to follow God's guidance and direction with a thankful and believing heart, even when that faithfulness took him to the cross. That's because he knew that he was given the name Jesus because he would save his people from their sins. And saving his people meant dying on the cross in our place as our substitute. He went to the cross to purchase for the world the gift of forgiveness, and by his blood, we are forgiven for all the times that we've responded to God's guidance and gifts with thankless and unbelieving hearts. And thanks be to God that just as he said he would do on the third day, Jesus rose from the dead, defeating death and the grave. He ascended into heaven where he rules forever as King of kings and Lord of lords, and he will one day soon return in glory on Judgment Day. And while we wait for that day, it's okay for you to think that you are more valuable to him than gold and frankincense and myrrh because you are his church. And you are wise to respond to his love with a thankful and believing heart bowing down to him and worshiping him and giving him your best and giving the world your thankful and faith-filled best. That's what makes the world a better place.
In Jesus' name, amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, by the leading of a star, you brought the Magi to Bethlehem to worship your Son, Jesus. By the leading of your Spirit, you have brought us to faith in him as our Savior and King. Receive our gifts of thanks and praise for all your mercies shown to us in Christ. Since you have called us by name through our baptism into him, Release us from all our fears and anxieties. Make us bold to trust you and fervent in love for you, that we may serve you faithfully in our generation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <laughs>